What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we've got some new Digimon cards to take a little bit of a look at. And look, they don't really have much in common. Two of them are dual color cards. One of them's a level six pure blue. I just want to talk about some new Digimon cards. And these are awesome. So I want to start off having a little bit of a look at Dino Humon. And I'm probably pronouncing that terribly, for which I apologize. Now, what we've got here is a dual color yellow and red Digimon. Five cost to play normally, two cost to Digivolve, 5,000 power. So we're on the higher end in terms of level fours, but there's nothing particularly unusual here. This seems fine. And we have a dual color red and yellow, which is nice. And it can Digivolve from either red or yellow which is lovely. So if you want to make a dual color yellow and red deck, this seems like a pretty good way to go about doing so. And one thing that is important, we need to look at combinations of colors because red and yellow, it's been a little bit underserved. We saw Silphimon the other day, which was cool. It's not a dramatic pause, incidentally. It's just, it's just that what, what we've seen so far. We've seen Silphimon and this. They are the red and yellow dual color Digimon that we've seen so far. So, cool. If we want to be playing around with those two colors, these are, these are the Digimon we can be having a little bit of a play with. And what we've got here is one inheritable skill, whereby when you are attacking, one of your opponent's Digimon loses a thousand power for the turn. Okay. And I'll be honest with you, like this is fine as a skill, but it's not one that is going to particularly excite anyone. Sure, yellow decks love lowering power. That's a good thing. But then by the same token, it's a thousand power. And that can break a power tie. And that can be the last 1,000 power to delete a Digimon, but it's not exactly terribly impressive. Just a day or two ago, I showed you Angliamon. When you are attacking, if you've got a blue Digimon in play, one of your opponent's Digimon loses 3,000 power for the turn. And that's a level 4. Now, it is a mono color, not a dual color, but it can still Digivolve from yellow or blue, so it's kind of halfway there-ish. I'm just saying that if you want to have a level 4, with a skill that is lowering power, you're not necessarily wedded to this one. There are other places we can go, I think is a polite way to put it. It's fine, but it's not a card that excites me all that much. But maybe Master Tyrannomon will. We've got a dual color red and green Digimon, which as a man who is red, green, colorblind, this just feels like it's mocking me right in my face. And it can Digivolve from either red or green. And like we've seen from a bunch of these, we've got 8 cost to play normally, which is more than normal. 8,000 power, which is more than normal. 4 cost to Digivolve, which is more than normal. 737 is what we would generally expect from a level 5. But it is dual color, and like I keep saying, dual color has more utility. There's more you can do with dual color Digimon. So straight off the bat, there is a reason here which is pretty gosh darn cool. But then we've also got some skills here, which might make me like the card a little bit more. So for instance, on your turn, your Digimon with Tyrannomon in their name gain security attack plus one. Oh, that's really good. That's like really good. Because <laughs> the thing is, right, you make a Tyrannomon deck, and then all of your Digimon with Tyrannomon in their name get extra security attack. And Tyrannomon is, well, it's been represented. Now, we have had some red versions over here. Uh, Tyrannomon, the level 4, I am loving here. This is a red one that's got jamming. Yeah. Jamming says that when you attack the stack, you ain't getting deleted. Which means not only do you have security attack plus 1, but you are guaranteed to not be deleted by a security card because you've got jamming and incidentally if you get four master tyrannomon out then yes your one level four tyrannomon will have security attack plus four will take out all five security cards and will have jamming 
There are others out there, and we'll talk about some more in a second. But you give me a level four that's got jamming, and I am in, ladies and gentlemen. I am 100% all the way in. Also, don't forget there is the level 4 Saranamon from BT2, that when you did Javolve, you reel the top 3 cards of your deck, and add a level 5 Digimon and a Green Tamer to your hand, and Master Tyrannomon is a level 5 Digimon. So, this seems like a combo we could maybe get on board with here. This seems like something that could be fun. Just putting that out there as a nice example. And let's not forget that that Tamer is going to be Tiger. Tiger is going to be your tamer of choice here because your Digimon whose names contain Tyrannomon gain piercing. So not only are you getting extra security attack, but you're also getting piercing. And if you would Digivolve into a Digimon whose name contains Tyrannomon, you may rest this card and reduce the Digivolution cost by one. So, I mean, look, I've always quite liked Tyrannomon. But I've never really liked, like, Rust Tyrannomon, right? Is there anyone that looks at the art of Rust Tyrannomon and doesn't want to play that as a deck? I mean, if you do, we'll probably never be friends. But, like, looking just at the artwork, this card is amazing. It looks so cool. But it's a pretty expensive Digimon. And you can attack unsuspended Digimon. And then when it deletes one of your opponent's Digimon in battle and survives, you suspend one of your opponent's Digimon. In a BT 1 and 2 format, it was fine, but it never really got particularly good. But now, as well as piercing, you've got extra security attack, and you can attack unsuspended Digimon. And if you put that all together, you can attack anyone you like, and Tiger gives you piercing, so you still perform a security check, but it's actually two security checks because Master Tyrannomon's giving you security attack plus one, maybe more. And yeah, these Tyrannomon decks just got like a billion times better. Also worth pointing out that on your turn, when this Digimon deletes one of your opponent's level six or higher Digimon in battle, bearing in mind you've also got piercing to then attack the stack and extra security attack, you unsuspend and look at the wording on Metal Tyrannomon. It does not say once per turn. So I'm not saying that Master Tyrannomon is all of a sudden going to make Tyrannomon decks absolute broken tier one phenomenal awesome decks. But I 100% am saying that it makes them way better, way more fun, way more interesting. And as a man who put Rust Tyrannomon down a few months ago, finally deciding that it actually wasn't that good and it was never going to work. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go dig out my Rust Tyrannomon, ladies and gentlemen. Because um, I think things just got much more interesting. And I suppose I should mention that as an inheritable skill... It gives security attack plus one. So if you just leave it out, all your Digimon with Tyrannomon in their name get security attack plus one. That's what I really like about it. But then you can Digivolve it into something like a Rust Tyrannomon and still have security attack plus one. So that's pretty gosh darn good. And then we can finish off today having a little bit of a look at a card I don't like as much if I'm honest with you. But Frost Velgrimon. And I'll be perfectly honest with you here. I am genuinely genuinely gutted this is a rare not a super rare because if you saw my opening of bt6 and if you haven't it's on this channel or if you've opened bt6 yourself you will notice that these super rares are now textured and actually if you saw my opening of the starter decks which again is on this channel they've changed it again so the super rares are very very glossy on the digimon but textured all around it and this card would look so cool in either of those versions. And I'm assuming BT8 has super rares like the starter decks. But regardless of which version they have, with the new texture, this would be such a cool card. And it is wasted on a rare. It needs to be a super rare. Boo, etc. But what we've got here is a level 6, 11 cost to play normally, 4 cost to digivolve, 12,000 power. The only thing that is the traditional standard level 6 is a 11 cost to play normally, but you've got a digivolution skill, so you're never even going to use it. When you are digivolving, trash one digivolution card from the top of one of your opponent's Digimon. Okay. And trashing from the top is often better, because you take a level 6 down to a 5, 7 down to a 6, etc., which is cool. Then return one of your opponent's Digimon that has no Digivolution cards to its owner's hand. 
So it doesn't need to be the same Digimon. So you can take a 6 down to a 5 and then go, oh, that level 4 has no Digivolution sources. Be gone with you. And that would totally work. So okay, that's kind of nice. And then we've got a second skill here. On your opponent's turn, your opponent's Digimon gain the following effect. When attacking, trash the bottom card from this Digimon's Digivolution sources. I actually really like this. I think this has the potential to make it a really, really good card. Because essentially what you're doing here is making your opponent ask the awkward question, can I afford to attack? And most of the time the answer is going to be yes, but firstly they're losing Digivolution sources that are often going to have inheritable skills, so they're losing those inheritable skills, which is, I mean look, if they didn't want the inheritable skills they wouldn't be playing the cards. So the fact they're even playing the cards that have the inheritable skills tells you that they want the inheritable skills and they probably don't want to lose them, and that means it's a win for you! Yay! But also, you've got this skill that preys on Digimon with no Digivolution cards. And there are a billion, approximately, blue cards out there that prey on Digimon that have no Digivolution skills. So by having this one out there, they, by which your opponent's Digimon, are more and more likely to have no Digivolution cards. So all of these other skills will activate. And you see where we're going with this, ladies and gentlemen? You see where we're going with this? It is a very, very, very nice skill indeed. I'm still unconvinced whether it's really going to make it up there as a top played blue card. Because although getting rid of Digivolution sources is cool, it tends to be a bonus. It tends to be part of a strategy rather than the whole strategy. And we've got so many really good level 6 blue Digimon out there at this stage. I am not sure this is good enough to burst its way through. But if you want to play a fun deck which is getting rid of your opponent's Digivolution sources, this is here for you, ladies and gentlemen. This is here for you. And certainly in pauper formats where you are not allowed to play super rares, and I know some people enjoy those formats, this one could be a beast. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Three new Digimon cards. For me, it is all about Master Tyrannomon. That is one I am hyper excited about. But I want to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section, would you? Go nuts! Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Digimon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wasi Plays.